today we're looking at the covenant that God made with Abraham in the book of Genesis. So when God first comes to Abraham in Genesis 12, that's when he first tells him, go to this land that I've promised you, I'm gonna make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. A few chapters later, some time has passed, and in Genesis 15, God comes back to Abraham. And Abraham questions God saying, how is this going to happen? I don't even have a son, I don't have an heir. How are these promises gonna to come to pass? And God brings Abraham out in this verse that's very famous to us. And look at the stars of the sky. And if you can even count them, that's how many your descendants will be. And Abraham chooses to believe God. And then God continues to remind Abraham, I have a land that I've promised you. And Abraham again kind of questions saying, how am I going to know that I get this land that you've promised? And so God instructs Abraham to get some animals together. And Abraham apparently is aware at this point that he is entering into this covenant ceremony with God. Because what he does with these animals is he splits them in half and separates them. Now in the Old Testament, when people were making a covenant with one another, this is what they would do. They would take these animals, they would split them in half, and traditionally both parties would walk through the split animals as a sign and a seal of their covenant. A covenant was just when two parties entered into a relationship or a partnership with each other for a shared common goal. There's a mutual agreement and both parties have responsibilities and an end to uphold to their part of the bargain. Then they walk through these split animals, sailing their covenant, and basically it's saying, if I don't uphold my end, may I be as these animals. The penalty is death if I don't uphold my end of the covenant. Well, then a really interesting thing happens because Abraham falls into a deep sleep. Now, this isn't just like a tired at the end of a long day sleep, it falls on him and he's in this deep sleep and he has a vision of the Lord. And God talks to him more about how his people will be slaves in Egypt and then released and brought into this promised land. And then the best part is that Abraham sees this smoking fire pot and a blazing torch, symbols of the Lord Almighty, pass through the split animals. What God has done here is God has taken full responsibility for the covenant. It is not dependent on Abraham. It doesn't matter what Abraham or his descendants do or do not do because the full responsibility of these promises now fall to God. He is the one taking responsibility to, to fulfill all of these promises to Abraham and his people. And I hope you can see how that foreshadows us to Jesus because Jesus makes this promise to us of eternal life, of redemption, of justification and right standing before him. But he takes all of that on himself. He alone is responsible to bring that salvation. It is not anything that we do or don't do that makes Jesus keep or not keep his promise to us. He takes full responsibility for our salvation. And while God's people have been covenant breakers from the beginning, way back with Adam and Eve, who did not uphold their end, who failed, God knew he was going to make a way to bring those promises about and he would do it himself. And while our punishment should be death for the ways that we break God's covenant, Jesus takes that on himself. Isaiah 53, 5 says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Jesus takes full responsibility for the ways that I did not live up to God's standard. Jesus makes the promise. He fulfills the covenant all on his own. My only part is trust in him. In Genesis 15, 6, when Abraham believes God, it says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Abraham simply trusts that God is who he says he is, that God will do what he says he will do. He trusts that God will fulfill these promises to him. And that faith puts him in right standing with God. And our faith in Jesus is all it takes to be justified before him. In Ephesians 2, 8, it says, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It's a gift. It's a gift from God. 
I want to circle back to the very first verse of Genesis 15 when God comes to Abraham in the first place, before this covenant even takes place. And what he says to him in verse 1 is, Abraham, do not be afraid. I am your shield and your very great reward. And as we journey through this Lent season, I think we can rejoice in remembering that Jesus took the punishment that belonged to us, that he alone seals the covenant and makes the promise. He alone is responsible. And at the same time, remember that because of our trust in him, he is our shield and he is our very great reward.